group. Previously, we have the young professionals. And now I have to ask you, how about the labor sectors, the faith-based organizations, other centrist democrats in this country, and the most serious ones are the public officials and non-political personalities in our region and the country. This is a very sensitive issue which we should seriously discuss today. The fourth one, it is impliedly accepted that we cannot deny entry of public officials and non-political personalities for we are an open and a democratic movement. Aside from that, their position will in some ways enhance the recognition of our movement in politics. What general mechanism are we going to formulate today in treating city members who are incumbent public officials or non-political personalities that they will faithfully abide by our service values and principles in the way they handle the position and as they appear in public. The fifth, in recruiting prospective and capable CDM leaders in the district, how many trainings are you going to conduct this year in the national, the regional, and in the district level? The second component is on policy formulation. You know our movement has many active and serious CDM members who are asking me on what is the stance of our movement on many political issues in the region or in the national level. My email is filled with suggestions, comments, and requests for our movement stand. We will never become a relevant political movement if we cannot immediately and professionally present our position to a wider audience to current political issues of the country. I am challenging you here to discuss and provide the National Council a general mechanism on this aspect. I have to this, I have formulated some of the guiding questions like in creating thematic commissions within the CDS, what general mechanism are we going to decide in identifying political programs? At least three general thematic commissions are needed to be established, like for example, Home Affairs, which will tackle political party reforms, strengthening of democratic reforms, decentralization, subsidiarity, the rule of law, and human rights. The second one is in socio-economic issues, which will tackle poverty alleviation, trade, social market economy, agriculture, social systems, labor, tax, health and education. And the third commission is on security and foreign affairs. How are we going to identify and prioritize the political issues? What criteria are we going to formulate today? How about today? What are the current political issues that the CDM has to make a stand? In having a position to political issues, how are we going to identify and decide on it that it will become our official stand and at the same time protect the stand of the others who have contrary views? The last component that we are going to discuss is our communication strategy. How are we going to maximize the utilization of our own CDM website and internet technology in membership registration, updates of CDM, and on our centrist advocacy. What is the communication flow within the movement that will enhance our unity and cohesiveness? How are we going to deal with the print, the radio, and the television or the tri media sector in advocating our centrist values and principles? The challenge is we have to respond immediately we have to respond immediately to this with a strategy of making our work today simple and understandable for everyone. That is our approach now, a simplified and comprehensible framework. There is no doubt that in the public we will then be credible and have the certain authority if we could manage to be united in deciding our strategic plan today and dedicated in realizing it. We must evade any disagreements over the style technicality or whatever semantics, just think that we have talented secretariat over there to take care of it and polish it. What they need is our unique and critical thoughts. And now I come to the conduct of our planning. Each of us can perceive the sheer size of the task which faces us if we are to carry out our plan. The one year time frame is somewhat short, but we shall endeavor to, to fulfill and realize it. 
The practical working procedure of our meetings today is not a matter to me. We are democratic, show your enthusiasm, and feel free and responsible and showing your ideas. Your National Council with the Secretariat and with the conveners will, fi will finalize and polish them. The principle underlying our existence and in having this activity today is unity. The delegates here must not regard themselves simply that you represent your region. Each delegate may of course will remain concerned with this region, but I enjoin you to make your personal contribution to the movement. Let us be clear about this. Our activity today will not succeed if it is only a venue for expressing divergence and sometimes out of the blue opinions. We need that this gathering today be the melting pot where a common plan will be worked out. In order to be ready to listen, let us turn towards what is happening to our country. When we think of our plans, we have to turn towards each other and gradually foster the spirit of unity and oneness. It is true that the bulk of the work will be in practice be made by the National Council. To me, it is all right, but everything will depend to a large extent on you and the substance of your contributions. If your contribution is asking for a consensus, and if you take account of the comments made by the other members, then the content of the final consensus can be worked step by step. Let me conclude by calling again on your enthusiasm. The word comes from the Greek word enthusiasm, which means inspired by God. To me, we are fighting a noble cause, because we believe we are all inspired by God, by someone greater than us, and someone who is giving us worth and dignity. We are often guilty for neglecting our country, for contenting ourselves with what is happening to our nation today. So let us dream for a great Philippines. Let us dream for a country at peace, at liberty of its barriers and obstacles, where our history and geography will reconcile, allowing all regions to build their own future. A space of opportunity and freedom, where Filipinos can move as they wish to work, study, enterprise, or broaden their cultural perspectives. A space undoubtedly identified by the way in which it successfully refines the vigor of our foundations, the need for solidarity and protection of the weakest and the poorest, but also a space in which strong cultural identities continue to exist and thrive, both aware of their origins and keen for the inspiration that exchange can bring. Let us also imagine, imagine Philippines voice in the world, its unity ensuring the protection of our national interests. The richness of our culture and the strength of our creativity are known all over the world. It must also show itself as competent of ensuring its own security, whatever the dangers we face. We must share to others our dream for the Philippines. If we were to fail, our country will remain to be what it is today. None of us would have the power to take on the evils of, the, of this country. We would then remain locked in ourselves, blindly analyzing the process of our fall and decline. Our call for enthusiasm goes out to other Filipinos, but foremost to ourselves. We must be passionately interested in the success of our task today if we are to engage and persuade others. It is a mission, humble in form, but enormous in content. For if it succeeds in accordance with our mandate, then it will light up the future of the Philippines. Long live the Philippines. Thank you, Dagan Salamat. So now let's proceed with our <coughs> planning.